So do you ever find that you want to try to mix up your style in your art journal pages? Today, I'm gonna to be emulating the work of Julie DeBoer. She's a fantastic artist and I love her flowing, colorful style. And today we're gonna to be using that as a jump off point for today's project to create a beautiful art journal page. So let's get started. So this is a sample of Julie DeBoer's work. It's not as colorful from the printed version as you can see from the version that I pulled from her website. But you can see she has beautiful flow, she has gorgeous colors, and I wanted to add this to my art journal page. So the first thing I did was add some gesso. And today I decided to use some gray gesso. I have this neutral gray gesso that I've had for quite a while, and I wanted to use it as a starting place because now I can add a lot of darks and lights and be able to see a little bit more of the contrast than starting just with white. Uh, but I wanted to show you the focal images I want to use in today's project. So this moon and this raven, from Simply Stated Design. I love their imagery. Um, I thought this would work really, really well. So we're gonna be starting by trying to create a background that looks a little bit like this, and then add in the raven and add in the moon. Um, I'm gonna be experimenting a little bit, so we'll see what this ends up looking like. So you'll know your gesso is dry when it's room temperature and it's not cold. And so I've added two layers to start. And I really do like this neutral gesso. The neutral gesso is just gonna give us something that's not too dark, not too light to start with. And that's gonna make it a little bit easier to add our colors onto our page. I'm gonna be using an old drafting tool that I pulled out of my husband's toolbox. This is called a flexible curve or freestyle curve. And when we're trying to create these beautiful shapes, something like this is gonna go a long way for helping us get the shapes that we're looking for. I'm not gonna necessarily copy her stuff exactly, and this is the point of when you're working with trying to emulate an artist, is that you don't necessarily have to do it exactly the way they're doing it, but just try to get that sense of feeling of what they're doing. And so all I'm doing is I'm basically adding in a bunch of curves. It's a beautiful thing about the flexible curve is you can create pretty much any shape. And then all I'm using is a watercolor pencil. And what's nice about the watercolor pencil is because it will basically disappear once we add paint, but against the gray background, you can see how it adds just a really nice look to the page. So I'm trying to get the general curves of this. And this is why a flexible curve is just fabulous. And this flexible curve is in really good shape. Uh, part of it is my husband pretty much used it for his first year of school and then hadn't used it in years and years and years until I pilfered it from his toolbox, which I, he was more than happy to see me use it. But it was a funny thing because um, it isn't something that he uses a lot in his work anymore. Uh, again, this is back in the day when they used to do blueprints on, on a drafting board. And this is where this tool really came in handy for people who are creating in that way. Once I said this is if you have a line you don't like, you can always take a little bit of water and just remove the color. You're not necessarily stuck with a line just because you put it on. And that's why I love using watercolor pencil for these types of steps is because you end up with the look and feel that you really want and you're not necessarily stuck with something. Uh, but before I get too far, I wanna make sure that I put in a spot for my raven here. He's gonna need to have a spot to sit. I think I want him to have maybe a spot like this because I, I don't want it to be across the entire bottom. But I do wanna have a spot for him to sit. And then I'm gonna be adding in other lines into this as well. What I really love about her work is the flow of it. The flow is just fantastic. And I just love the different shapes she creates. I find it very whimsical. I find it super fun. I like the strong graphics. I love her colors. And so this is just a way of just learning a little bit about what I like in art. Because sometimes we don't necessarily know where we want to go, but we see someone else do it and we're like, oh, I really like that. That can be as much of a part of it as anything else, is, is figuring out like, what is it that you like? What style really inspires you? And how can you add that to your own art? So I'm going to start with mixing our paints. And I'm going to be using a lot of um, fluid and high flow acrylics in today's project. It's gonna be a really easy way to be able to get uh, this really fluid motion without having the paint be on too, too thick. The high flow paints are often used in airbrushes and other mediums. So it's something to be aware of. You can see it's very liquid. It's trying to move on the surface. And so I'm just gonna start with a few colors just to start off with. I've started with um, indigo blue. I was gonna originally go with some more teal, but I think I wanna go more with this dioxazine purple and maybe some magenta, because I think I wanna stick to a little bit more warmer tones and make this a slightly warmer painting. So I'm gonna be able to see my whole palette, but I'm gonna try to show you as much of my mixing area as I can. So I'm just kind of wetting my brush a little bit. You don't want it sopping wet, um, especially with these ones, just because 
um, they can go on fairly easily. And I know I'm contaminating that one a little bit, but it's okay. We're gonna be creating quite a few different blues. So I'm gonna go for more of like a nice kind of warm-ish, almost like a, I don't know if it's a periwinkle blue. So I've definitely um, added a little less blue to that indigo than it usually is. And so all we're doing for this first layer is just adding in uh, some of our base color, trying to determine the colors we have. We're not gonna be worrying about shading at this point. We're just worrying about filling in color. And then once we fill in all of the color, then we're gonna start playing with the shading and we're gonna be playing around with how we can make this a lot more dynamic and a lot less flat. But you can see that by using this color and by using the high flow color, you're getting a really intense color, but it's extremely smooth. And so the nice thing about the fluid and the high flows is they're the highest pigment level of paints that you can get. It's a way of getting your paint down quickly and dynamically and not having to add layer on layer on layer. Again, this is where the really high quality paints really have their day in the sun is just because of the high pigment and the beautiful colors. They go on very, very easily and you don't need to add tons and tons of layers. To try to get a really nice color. And you can really use any of the colors that you have for this. You really don't have to stick to the same colors that I'm sticking to. What we're really looking to do at this point is get that first layer of color down. Then we're going to worry about um, shading and all sorts of other things. And that's where I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about what we're gonna to try to do with this piece. And we're gonna to try to follow uh, Julie's technique a little bit more closely. But at this point, we're just looking to add a lot of color. But you can see how that neutral gray really does help with adding in color because you can see what's really dark and what's kind of mid-tones and what's lighter. And it can give you a better feel of how light or dark you wanna go with a piece. But I did want to share with you some of the inspiration I had about using other artists as a stepping off point. And this has been from a few different sources. One is a teacher that I know, she started teaching a Paint Like the Masters class. And I was helping with an open studio and I saw some of the work her students were doing. And I was so impressed about how far they were getting with some of these masters like Van Gogh and being able to emulate their techniques. And then around the same time, I was taking a art class from one of my favorite artists, uh, Samantha williams Chapelsky, and she was talking about the importance of us learning from others and that we'll see something and maybe want to add it in. But her comment was like, don't do too many things with just one artist. Don't spend a year painting in another artist's style because what happens is you almost lose your own feel and take on that. Her comment was like, spend about six weeks practicing using maybe another artist technique and then move on to a different artist and keep switching up the artists that are inspiring you. Switch up the people that you're following. because that's gonna give you a much better sense of what you wanna do in your own artwork. That's gonna feel a little bit more organic and natural and something that you can really make part of your style. I really believe that by emulating other artists, it can help us find our own sense of expression. But I think the key is trying to not always copy someone. And that's why today's project, I haven't done any planning for it or anything else. I'm just winging it and seeing how it goes. And we'll see where I end up with this. And I just wanted to share this process with you because I thought it was really important that we learn from others because sometimes we get stuck. And I get stuck a lot. I have moments of like, I've been doing the same techniques for the last couple months. Like I really need to switch things up. And so that's why I'm sharing this today. I thought it was a challenge that I'm doing for myself that you might want to follow along with. So when we are deciding to focus on emulating another artist, the question is, what do we like about the other artist's pieces? Is it the colors? Is, is it the composition? Is it the flow of the piece? Is it the subject matter? For my art journal, I really like what Julie has done with her skies. I really struggle with skies and I love the colors of her skies and the unusual way that she makes them so bold, beautiful, and unique. The colors and the variation of the sky, that's what I really want to bring to this piece. And the reason I chose this one is whether or not you feel comfortable drawing or not, this is not a hard one to draw. Find something that's going to give you curves or just freehand curves onto your page and it's a great place to start. This is why I've added in like a raven and a moon. So even if you're not comfortable with the idea of drawing, you can add in pre-made ephemera as your focal image, but this gives you a chance to play with that paint and that color and that background and see what results you can get. So just as I'm adding these layers, I'm realizing I should have maybe gone about this a little bit differently. I should have maybe done a few different shapes and a little bit of a different feel to it. I'm realizing that the way she adds her colors and creates harmony is a little harder to do than I actually thought. And this is sometimes a thing. You see someone's work, you go, oh, that looks so easy. 
and then you try it yourself and you go, actually, that takes a lot of talent and a lot of work to get there. So um, that's what I'm learning. And I'm, you might notice that I'm starting to add in color on top. And what I'm finding is this actually works almost better to mix the colors together in that first layer. It's not all going to be perfectly mixed, but it's just going to be a start for just trying to add in a little bit of those softer lines instead of having everything having a harsh line. So I'm going to continue to play with this a little bit and see what I can come up with. And we're going to be adding a lot more paint, a lot more layers, but I just want to give you a spot to start with to kind of understand where I'm going with this. And so if you're trying to replicate this yourself, some of the things that I'm learning as I've been trying to create. I got that first layer of paint and honestly, I'm not totally happy with the look of this. It's not bad. It's just, I feel like I have too many colors going on. I think I need to probably get rid of some of the purple and do it more of a blue with some yellow areas. And I'm not even sure if I actually want to add in the moon. Um, the raven may just be good just on his own. The biggest thing right now is I basically added in a bunch of the layers, but what I should have been doing as I was adding the layers was to blend areas like this where I was actually adding some natural blending between two colors as I was working. So I'm going to come in and just try to add in some different variations of color and see what I can do. I'm trying not to have too many different colors on here. I'm trying to do as many color mixes as I can manage just so that I don't have a ton of different colors on the surface. But yeah, I'm just going to keep playing with it. And this is what I would call a painting's ugly phase. It isn't terrible. It just isn't great. It needs a lot more blending. It needs a lot more work just to give it that really soft, um, organic look that I'm looking for. And this is the funny thing about when you start looking at someone else's work, you might go, oh, I think I can manage to do that. I, I think I, I have the skills to do that. And then you realize there's a lot more subtlety to their work than you ever realized. <laughs> But I found that adding in the manganese blue hue was actually a good choice. It's a really nice blue for skies. And again, I'll add in some of that indigo, but I think I'd be using a little bit less than I put in before. And I think I'm going to pull back on the red a little bit. I feel like that's taking over maybe a little bit too much. I might throw in some phthalo blue red shade. That might be like warming it up enough without adding in too much purple. But I will add in just a touch of this purple color here just to see what I can do with it. I've also added in some heavy body paints gray. So for this one, I'm basically just having to add a lot of water to it. Let's try to get it a little bit more fluid to add it to my surface. So I'm gonna start by adding in a little bit of paints gray. This is where I'm gonna clean my brush and then actually come in with a little bit of the indigo and try to get some mixing going on here. So it feels a little bit more natural, mixes in with what I've already added for the indigo and add a little bit too much paint on my brush here. So. That's something I'm gonna have to watch moving forward. The nice thing is once you actually let the other colors dry is you can do things like that where you can just take your wet paper towel and just adjust it a little bit. And I'm not a huge fan of just how muted this color is. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more of that straight blue. And then along the edge here, I'm just gonna basically just add in some white so that we get some better transition. I think what she does as well too, is I think she has less paint on her paintbrush. Like I feel like I have too much on my paintbrush. Yeah, so there we go. We can get a little bit more of the streaky, softer feel by adding in thinner layers of paint. And then this is actually where I'm gonna add a little bit more water to that color. I'm gonna come back in again. So already I think that's better. That gives that dynamic look. It makes it softer, it makes it more beautiful. But you can see this is where the, not the problem, but this is the challenge about painting is a lot of people think painting's one or two layers and off you go, where the more you paint, the more layers and details you add as you gain in skill. And I'm gonna try to simplify the colors a bit. I have a few too many colors going on here and I'm not a huge fan of this purple. So I'm just gonna go over it with a little bit of this blue just to see what ends up happening with that color. So I may not have to remove the purple altogether. I just may just need a little bit of toning down. But this is where learning from somebody else's work can be really valuable. And I think it also makes you appreciate their style a lot more. Understand that when you do see an artist's work, like just to start to understand like just the complexity and the skills they've had to learn to really get there. And then that can be an incursion to you as well of, you know, I'm just doing this in the art journal. Is this a place to play with it? But this, now that I've done in the art journal, I think I'd be willing to give this a try in canvas. I think I could probably make it work quite well for me. But I think that looks better. Instead of feeling like it's completely being taken over, I feel like that's a lot softer. That's a lot nicer. And I think by just simplifying the colors a bit, I had too many colors going on. It actually, in a lot of ways, takes away from your work when you have too many colors. 
which maybe feels a little counterintuitive. Like, well, you have more colors, you have more vibrancy, but it can get too busy. And that's something that I know I struggle a lot with in my art and my work. And I find this a lot harder when I'm not working on an easel. I work on a flat surface just so you guys can see it better. But I prefer doing this on an easel because then I can take a better step back, take a look, and then come in with other colors. Um, I find it's a lot harder when you're not working on an easel. So if you've never worked on an easel, I would really recommend it. You start with a tabletop easel. I have several tabletop easels that I use for small pieces, and then I have a large easel that I use for much larger pieces. An easel is an investment, but I think it's one that's definitely worth making. I think it's, it's going to help your painting a lot. The biggest thing is it allows me to step away, uh, take a better look at my colors and where things are going, and then adjust accordingly. I find the more I'm pulling out the blue, the happier I am with this. It's not that there isn't purple in it, it's just a lot more muted and a lot less strong. And sometimes it's something that we can run into when we're learning to paint is we tend to do too many colors and, and too strong. And I'm not by any means a really seasoned painter. Honestly, I haven't painted much in this last year and that's why over the summer you'll probably see a few more painting videos on my channel just because I do want to get back into it. It's something that is pretty important to me actually as an artist. I love to paint and I don't know, I've just been kind of stuck in my rut of doing a lot more just straight mixed media and I want to try to add in a few more of my imagery or even like work on just adding some backgrounds in and you know maybe I do use some imagery that I've discovered from another artist and I'm just adding in a little bit of this micaceous iron oxide you can see it has a little bit of that shine to it. And I don't want a few of those little green hues that are coming in with the yellow over the blue. Because I think it adds a little bit of a, a really nice look. And because we did a little bit of the lighter, more opaque blue with the light blue there, that adds a little bit of nice color to it. I'm also going to add a little bit more white to this paint. It's a little too translucent right now. I almost feel like I need to add in a layer of paint. So you can even see just by wiping and smearing that paint a little bit. That creates some more interesting and softer look to some of these areas. And I might actually, I was using Quinn Magenta, but I think I want to actually come with some Quinn Red. This might be a better shade to go with that yellow. We're going to give this a try. Yeah, I like the look of that a lot better. And you can see by sticking with those really thin layers of paint. And I try not to use a tiny brush like this just because I find that I end up getting too fussy. But for some of these ones where maybe you just want a little bit of a smear of color in there, it works a lot better. So we're going to come in with a little bit more of the yellow. And then that's a way we can continue to blend. I already think that's a lot better. Let's bring in some of that blue shade. A little bit of the manganese blue hue. I'm going to throw it in there. Have a little bit of contrast going on. And those more pure colors are I'm finding I'm getting a lot less of that muddy look. You might more want more of a muted look. I personally want to try to go a little bit brighter with this. And I will finish this inside with a little bit of indigo. And I'm just taking a dry brush and I'm trying to mix the edges of those colors together. Just to give it a little nicer mix. Because again, we're trying to get areas that look this contrasting but really nicely mixed together. So then I'm just adding in a little bit more of that micaceous iron oxide, which always has like that little bit of fun shine. This is where I'm gonna move back to a larger brush. But anytime I have to do more than a few strokes in an area, I move to a bigger brush. And because of the nature of these highly, these high pigments, you can see that sometimes mixing the two together, you start getting some really cool color combinations. So then you have like some spots that has like the more indigo color and then you have other areas that are a little bit lighter. I'm really liking where that's going. That looks a lot, a lot better to me. I'm mixing in some Payne's Gray and some Acacia's Iron Oxide. And we're just gonna add in a little bit of color there. So some places you're gonna wanna have it all blended. There's other areas you're gonna want more of a stark line. And so you just have to decide for yourself where you want that on your painting and what you would like this to look like. So you can see now we, when you compare this side to this side, we're getting a lot better blending. And there's still some lines, but I think some of it is also just softening those lines even like that by just going over the surface like another time 
I really like where I've been simplifying the colors. I feel like that's now working for me. And some of these areas, like this area right here, I've just gone on over with a little bit of cerulean blue over a much lighter area. So again, letting that lighter spot kind of do the work for me. And now I'm gonna come in with a few darker areas. And that's a way you can create some of those, those fine lines without having to go super crazy with having like layer on layer on layer. Instead, it's um, you're kind of letting the some colors peek through underneath. You're letting other colors kind of come on top and that's creating some of the look that you want. And so I love this. This is kind of not matching the rest of the painting, so I think I'm gonna work on that area next. And again, I'm gonna do, come in with that combination of the phthalo blue and the manganese blue hue. Now I'm gonna come in with some more white, make some light blue there. I'll probably come in with some areas with just straight stark white, but right now that is not the plan. Maybe leave him one small little sliver of yellow there. But I definitely got too muddy and had too many colors in this area. And so sometimes that's what the good thing is about putting that initial layer of color down is you go, oh, that's working or oh, that's that's not great. And then instead of having spent tons of time doing tons and tons of like shaded layers, we're going, well, I don't really want to redo all of this. Instead, you have an area where you can kind of start and adjust, right? It makes it feel less precious, how about that? So I'm just gonna move in a slightly different direction right now and I'm gonna worry about figuring out this area down here. Cause I do want it to be kind of in the same family but maybe a bit of different color thrown in. And I'm trying to decide where I wanna go with this. Cause this is a little muddy, this is a little dark. Um, I do want it dark, I don't want it super light but maybe let's start with a little bit of the the Payne's Gray in places. Maybe this is where we do a lot of Payne's Gray and white. Again, this is where the moment you start moving away from what you've seen, and then the question comes down to, well, how are you gonna adjust it for you? What do you want it to look like? How is it gonna work for you for this project? So I love Payne's Gray. It's such a great color for painting. I actually use it in a lot of places instead of moving to black, I just use Payne's Gray. I need to thin that down a little bit with paint. So I want to try to find that balance between having good color and not having it so dark that it's kind of taken over. That's a bit much. That white's a bit much considering where we're going, but let's pull it in here for a little bit of the, the deeper gray. Yeah, you know what, why not? Why not throw in a little bit of a lighter gray in there? This is the nice thing about this style is because of the way colors blend and move is you can do some interesting stuff with it that maybe you would not normally do. But you can see with the nickel as a goal, it ends up adding in some, some interesting feel to it again, right? I'm not sure if I love that though. Yeah, it ended up going quite green, which is not where I really was hoping it would go. It usually goes like a nice warm brown, but I think just because I have so much gray on here, but I'm pretty... I do want to have more lines in this. This is pretty soft and nondescript, and I, I don't think that's the direction I want to go. But at the same time, now I know that I'm not going to be using the nickel as a gold. Instead, I'm going to be adding in some areas of blue. I kind of like that really strong line of white, actually. As much as I was like, no, at first, I'm actually, it's growing on me a little bit. So we're going to move through and add in some other layers. That's where we can throw some white in and mix it, mix it with the colors. Because now you see you've added some white. The paint's still wet. So by almost doing more of a wet on wet technique, you're getting some, some different shades and some different colors. Adding in some little white streaks in some places. Finding this is making a difference too with the things not getting too dark or too muddy. It's creating kind of good movement too. I think I'm pretty happy with how that ground area is. I think I'm just gonna leave that there. And, but I'm gonna adjust this one because I want, I want a dark blue along here. And then the rest of it, I do want it to get a little bit lighter. And this is where I think what I've learned about this style is it's almost better to mix some of the paint um, together on the surface while it's a little bit more wet on wet. I'm finding I'm getting better results with it and getting much more of a nicer mix. So I would almost do this again, just 
trying to work in areas and working wet on wet. And I think it would just end up saving you some time instead of everything having to be put on two or three times. So again, I'm adjusting and adjusting as I go and, and I may be adding in streaks of colors to some of these other areas, just bringing in some of that yellow in a couple spots and that way it just doesn't feel so like there's just one area of yellow in there. I'm just gonna be adjusting it a little bit just as I go, just trying to trying to figure out kind of where I want this to go. There you go, and I'm quite happy with how that looks. I'm, I'm quite happy with that area. And so at this point, I just have this main area here to work on, but you can see that just even by simplifying those colors, we're getting much better color and much um, more harmonious with it. Because I have lots of layers of color, but it becomes a little bit of a better mix of color. So I'm pretty happy with this. Again, it's not the same as the original painting. This was the original, uh, but I learned a few things through the process. One, uh, the idea that we have these lines that are coming down and across, but having them end here, it actually brings your eye down, but it's not too bad because I am gonna put a focal image on it, but it's something to think about of which are the directions of your swirls, what, how are they drawing your eye across the painting? And this technique was a lot harder than I originally thought. I'm trying to get uh, the really thin paint to be really smooth and have a bunch of that gradation was a little bit more challenging than I thought. But, and then again, when you're trying to mix some of the yellows together with the blues without creating too much green, that's a little bit challenging as well. I find this is a great starting point for just changing my style a little bit or trying a few new things. And so I'm going to finish by putting on my raven here and then adding in a little bit of shadows around his feet so he doesn't stick out quite as much. I'm fine leaving a little bit of white border that helps him stick out a little bit. I was originally going to put a moon in, but you can see with such a beautiful background, it would just detract from what I already have going on. Because this will write on any surface, the nice thing about it is now we can darken up this area here. And I'm trying to decide how much I want it to fall into the same lines or not. And this is where I've just added in a little bit of color and I'm gonna come in with a little bit of water and I don't mind if it goes on a little bit of that white area. I don't want his little feet getting a little bit of color on them because you don't want him to look like he's floating. This is also where I could have come in with a little bit of paint and just added in a little bit more of a darker background color here. I just don't want him to be floating too, too much in this painting. So I'm feeling pretty happy with this page, even though it didn't turn out quite like I expected it would. I think I always go into these projects thinking I'd be able to master it the first time around, and I know better. I know people that have spent years and hundreds of hours figuring out their style. It's not something I'm gonna learn overnight, but it's a really great way of practicing. It's a great way of improving your skills, and I've realized that I've let my acrylic painting skills get a little bit rusty the last little while, so this is something that I wanted to share with you if you're kind of in the same place. So I hope you really enjoyed today's video. And if you have, I would love to see your comments below about what you've learned or some things that you've learned about acrylic painting by 
practicing based off of other people's techniques. And if you've enjoyed this video, if you could like, subscribe, and just hit that notification button so you don't miss on any future videos. And if you're looking for any of the materials, including the paint colors that I used in today's project, look in the description below. I've included all the materials there for you. And if you're looking for another video about painting in the art journal, click here. This is a video I did a while back that I thought you'll really enjoy. So I'll see you in that next video.